Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I wanted to uh, go over our next uh, suffix, and this one's one that isn't really official, but it is very useful and uh, indicates steroids, and we, we can have quite a bit of a talk with it. So the suffix is sone, S-O-N-E, and sone, uh, S-O-N. Uh, we're going to talk in terms of GI, so because we're working through the seven major body systems, starting with gastrointestinal, I'm going to hold off on talking about steroids for asthma and other respiratory conditions, but there are respiratory and inhaled steroids available, at, such as fluticasone, a component in Advair for asthma, and budesonide, uh, which is a component in Simbicort. Uh, both are longer-acting steroids. Uh, you may even know fluticasone from the nasal spray, uh, which is for allergic rhinitis. But we, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about um, those, but, but really kind of focus on GI. First, uh, let's talk about the difference between an official stem and a useful drug suffix. An official stem is on the big list I have at memorizingfarm.com forward slash drug suffix. Again, that's memorizingfarm, P-H-A-R-M, dot com forward slash drug suffix, all one word, PDF, as these are the 800 or so are the agreed upon stems for medications by the governing bodies that decide such things. However, there are common endings that are still useful, like SON, S-O-N-E, and SON, S-O-N. For example, you can see SON at the end of fluticasone and prednisone. However, budesonide, enterocort, and cyclesonide, alvesco, have SON, S-O-N as an infix in the middle of the word. There are very few infixes in common English, so look for the letters as an ending or in the middle. However, if you look on the big drug suffix list, PRED, P-R-E-D, is on the list. That's because prednisone is actually the prodrug for prednisolone, P-R-E-D-N-I-S-O-L-O-N-E, which neither has SON, S-O-N-E, nor SON, S-O-N, but we want to show that they have a relationship. So officially, PRED is for prednisone and prednisolone derivatives. Prednisone can be used for a very powerful medicine for an acute flare-up, but it's not one that a patient can use long-term without significant side effects. So we'll talk about that in budesonide, brand Enterocort, and you can see entero, meaning like the GI, Okay, so, and then cort for corticosteroid. So it's a steroid for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Uh, Crohn's disease can go throughout the small or large intestine and rectum. Ulcerative colitis is typically uh, is at the end of the GI tract and the colon. Uh, the letter U, which starts ulcerative colitis, is almost at the end of the alphabet to help you remember the difference. Since UC is at the end of the GI tract, that's a really good candidate for rectal formulations. The reason we use steroids is that they reduce prostaglandin and kinin action, uh, which are important inflammation modulators. Our target therapy length uh, for these conditions might be a month or two, four to eight weeks. Side effects in the short term, you will see insomnia and stomach upset. That makes sense. The body releases cortisol when you're stressed, putting blood glucose in the bloodstream. All of that fight or flight action will keep you awake with too much steroid. This is also an important issue with long-term use in the raising of diabetics' blood sugar. For example, if there is a diabetic patient with UC, ulcerative colitis, we have the problem of needing steroid, but raising blood glucose is a side effect. Other notable side effects include risk of osteoporosis, affecting the bone strength, and immunosuppression. When the immune system is reduced, the chance of infection increases. Uh, the liver breaks down budesonide very quickly, which is good for a localized condition. It doesn't stay in the body as long. However, prednisone does not break down as quickly, which is good for a condition uh, that might affect the whole body, like lupus erythematosus. Uh, interactions. Uh, remember, we want to try to put our interactions and drugs on the patient chart in the GM rinse order. GI, musculoskeletal, respiratory, immune, neuropsych, and endocrine. So when you look at a CYP3A4 inhibitor chart and see dozens of medicines, try to order and group them. So here are some examples. Immune, antibiotics, antifungals, 
CYP3A4 inhibition can affect macrolide antibiotics such as azithromycin, brand Zithromax, clarithromycin, brand Biaxin, and erythromycin, brand Emycin. Uh, note their suffix is thromycin, T-H-R-O-M-Y-C-I-N versus just mycin, M-Y-C-I-N. And that's one of those ones that gets really confused because all it really is saying is uh, what bacteria this came from. And it may sound strange, but bacteria produce antibacterials. And the mycin, whether it's M-Y-C-I-N, uh, this thromycin, M-I-C-I-N, uh, that really, uh, we'll, we'll get into it when we get to antibiotics, but uh, it's a big difference. Uh, while we call azole antifungals azole antifungals, uh, the actual stem is conazole, C-O-N-A-Z-O-L-E. Uh, so remember, we talked about differentiating uh, fluconazole, diflucan, ketoconazole, nizoral, and itraconazole, sporinox, uh, with proton pump inhibitors, esomeprazole, and the prazole ending at the antipsychotics, piprazole, such as aripiprazole. So again, we're going through those uh, drugs that have that CYP3A4 inhibition. Uh, Cardio Verapamil brand Kalin is a calcium channel blocker with a PAMIL, P-A-M-I-L ending. And then endocrine, uh, well, we kind of discussed the issue of diabetes and increased blood sugar earlier. But that's really how you want to take it as you go drug by drug. And you see that, okay, we're going to add uh, this budesonide and terracort for a patient that has this uh, immuno immune condition or this autoimmune disorder where uh, the body's attacking itself. And uh, we need to be very wary of the other medications that come along with it. Okay, so again, I hope you enjoyed this kind of quick episode. Uh, what I just want to do is go through uh, the endings. And again, today was sewn and sewn really a little bit more for the GI. But again, we can use them for uh, respiratory, which would be for asthma conditions, and we can also use them for allergic rhinitis uh, in uh, some over-the-counter products uh, as well. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me, uh, the best way is tonythepharmacist at gmail.com. Uh, otherwise, check out the website memorizingpharm.com uh, where you can find uh, everything else.